Hi, it's Yulzi Carlson here, and today we're finishing off the rankings of the Core Beatles catalog, taking a look at 1970's Let It Be. This was the final released album by the band, actually coming out after their disbandment in early 1970. There are 12 tracks on this album, and it has an interesting history because this started out as the Get Back project, and ultimately ended up being a lot of unfinished demos that were largely finished by producer Phil Spector. As such, it's certainly a little different from other albums in the Beatles catalog, but still managed to spawn its share of gems. There are 12 tracks, let's go ahead and get started. At the absolute bottom of the list at number 12, I have Dig It. This is just like a short minute long excerpt of a much longer jam, and it's just very bland and forgettable. If they'd given us more of the jam or the complete jam, I might have ranked this a little higher, but as is, it's an oddity and it's much too short. At number 11, I have Maggie May, not to be confused with the Rod Stewart song. This is an old uh, folk song the Beatles adapted, but they just didn't really do anything to it. It's just old and folksy, and it doesn't even really feel like a Beatles song or like they even bothered to put any twist on it. The bottom two songs on this list could easily have been omitted from the album and been replaced with Don't Let Me Down, which was unfortunately relegated to being a single-only track. And in fact, that's what happened on the Let It Be Naked release eventually. At number 10, I have Dig a Pony. This is actually a pretty good song, and it's a marked step up from those who are at the bottom of the list. And I'm happy to say that this is a pretty solid Beatles tune. One that doesn't get talked about too much, but it's actually quite good. At number 9, I have Across the Universe. This is, of course, one of John Lennon's psychedelic songs of peace, love, and unity, and it's done very well. This is a song that I think has a pretty solid fan base, and it's not hard to see why. At number eight, I have The Long and Winding Road. This, of course, being Paul McCartney's piano ballad. And it's a very good one. The song was infamous because Paul McCartney always hated how Phil Spector added overdubs to this. But whether you're listening to this version on the album or you're listening to a stripped-down version that lacks those, it is a beautiful song. And regardless of what version you're listening to, I think it's a worthy Beatles tune. At number seven, I have One After 909. This was actually a song the Beatles recorded in their very early days as a band, but never actually released. The old versions wouldn't be released until the 1990s on the anthology CDs, so this was just sort of a filler they threw on from their old days because they needed something for the album, most likely. And it's a fun, fast-paced, frantic, old-school rock and roll tune, although I do prefer the youthful spontaneity of the earlier versions of this song that, once again, would be later released on the anthology. At number six, I have I've Got a Feeling. This being a great anthem of sorts from the Beatles' latter years, and proof that even when they were in turmoil and all hated each other, they could still get together and make beautiful music. At number five, I have Two of Us. Of course, the Beatles constantly flirted with country-western type sounds, and I think this was probably their best attempt at that sound. It's a great song, largely acoustic, and of course features some great vocal delivery as well. At number four, I have the title cut, Let It Be. This, of course, being a piano-heavy pop ballad. It even throws in some organ for a little extra flavor. The lyrics and the vocal delivery are some of the band's best, and this song is widely recognized, even all these years late. At number three, I have I, Me, Mine. The Beatles, at this point in time, were, you know, a shell of their former selves. There were a lot of bitter attitudes on display. And this tune from George Harrison, I think, really puts that into perspective better than any other piece of music ever could. It's pretty dark, dour, and depressing, but it's also painfully accurate for this era of the band. Although it does have a surprisingly upbeat refrain that uh, shows the song's not all depressing and heartbreaking. And number two, I have the other George Harrison song from the album, For You Blue. This one, on the other hand, is a very upbeat, almost happy blues rocker, and this time around it just sounds like George is having a good time, the complete antithesis of the previous song on this countdown. A lot of George's songs don't get talked about enough, and I think this is certainly one of his better later era Beatles songs. But the track I have at number one on this album, of course, would have to be Get Back. This song is just, it's a straight up rocker, and it's the band doing what they do best. The vocals are great, the guitars are great, the lyrics are great. You never forget this song after you've heard it, and rightfully so. And the version on Let It Be is actually my preferred version because it has the intro and outro from the rooftop concerts, complete with that classic auditions joke at the end. 
The single version that showed up on the CD of Past Masters Volume 2, of course, lacked any intros and outros. So there you have it. These are my rankings for the songs on Let It Be. What do you think is the best song on the album? What do you think is the worst? Comment down below and let me know what you think. But as always, keep the comments civil. Any rude or offensive comments will be deleted. Also, remember to subscribe to this channel for more contacts. I'm always posting new videos. And make sure you give us a like if you found it helpful. I'm Taylor T. Carlson. I'll see you next time.